Welcome back, everyone. So the next few minutes, we're, we, we've got the privilege of having Mike Morder on board. He's our new executive director. Um, I, I was involved in the selection process. And if you wonder what sort of questions you get uh, to ask a, a potential executive director of CCI, that I think the most interesting one came from a previous vice chancellor who was on the selection panel. And it was, what's your favorite animal? <laughs> so you have to bear this in mind if you're ever uh, um, being recruited to a top position within the University of Cambridge, but there's, there's some curveball questions like that. Um, <laughs> but it's really good to, to have Mike here. He's come uh, at the most unfortunate time with COVID-19, meaning that we're, we're not all in the building together, but it's been uh, a, a brilliant first few months. Uh, so thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit about what's your background and, and what, brought, what brought you here, uh, what you've been doing in the past? Thanks, David, and it's a great pleasure to be with you all this afternoon. And this is an extraordinary opportunity for me to get a sampling of the, the work going on with the Conservation Research Institute and the, the scale. Uh, it's extraordinarily exciting and for a slightly jaded old brain like mine, somewhat mm -hmm. overwhelming. Um, there's just so much going on that has immediate relevance to the challenges of, of now and what we face in terms of biodiversity collapse, climate crisis, the divorce between society and nature that seems to be happening at a, at a rapid rate. So I was highly upset at the interview when they asked me what my favorite animal was because I'm a botanist and I felt that this was very unfair. Um, I started off as a horticulturist and botanist. I was raised in a family where conservation was deep. My, my father was into the conservation of old apple breeds and domestic cattle. So at the weekend, we'd go around the south of England looking for the last orchards, old orchards that would hold Victorian, in some cases, Elizabethan apple varieties, or looking for the last survivors of the Gloucester cow or Norfolk corn sheep. So I trained in horticulture, then botany, and then got seduced by molecular genetics. And I spent most of my life working in species conservation work with Royal Botanic Gardens Q, various botanic and wildlife groups, and a long relationship with the Species Survival Commission of the IUCN. So I've sort of scrupulously avoided being a specialist and I'm a very happy generalist. I, I like to know lots of things in different areas, which means my kids think I should be brilliant at pub quizzes, but I'm crap. But it does mean that I can find interest everywhere I go. So that's what's brought me here, David. And my answer was the Dama gazelle, uh, one of my favorite desert antelopes, and I worked on them in, uh, in the Middle East. <laughs> it was a cracking good answer. And it, and it was, it, if, it, if you'd said goldfish, you'd have been that, you wouldn't have got the job. But uh, <laughs> That would have been my second. That was um, close. And, uh, and you've got opportunity. That was second. Oh, you. <laughs> and at um, 5.01, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to join the, the music quiz. So, so please do stay for that, um, as, as should everybody. We've got some wonderful entertainment with some live piano uh, and also a quiz alongside it. So, um, so that's a little plug for that. Uh, can you tell us, uh, Mike, a, a bit about some of the research opportunities you see um, we might have going forward with the conservation <laughs> org? Where, where there's the opportunities for us to, to work with them? Well, uh, I think the CCI is, is, was set up um, by an extraordinary visionary team. Um, and David and Basco, I know you were very much part of that. Um, and it was set up to promote collaboration between institutions. And one thing I was taught by my, by my mentors was never respect never respect disciplinary boundaries. They're, they're something to be trodden on and ignored. And I, I sit in on lectures such as we've heard today and I'm immediately writing notes linking, right, cement, the most dangerous substance in the world. Well, I know that sand harvesting for cement is a major source of damage to riverine forests in Eastern Africa. The only time in the last 10 years I've been at gunpoint in East Africa was by, by sand miners in Uganda. Um, I'm thinking, oh, that's that repeat LIDAR. 
that's a perfect tool for managing, for assessing regrowth of forests and restoration of forests. And so there is no end to the possibility of, of linking the conservation needs of the real world to the absolutely phenomenal research that's going on. And what's particularly encouraging is I'm finding huge enthusiasm from, from the researchers here at Cambridge to directly link their work to the real world. You know, the personification of the ivory tower, I've not found it here. There's a lot of people really committed to their work making a real difference, which is fantastic. So um, it's exhilarating. And, um, you know, I just feel a real privilege to represent the Cambridge Conservation Initiative and to have as one of our 10 members, the university, and to have within the university, the Conservation Research Institute, which is a really extraordinary group of people. So it's, yeah. I'll give you the list of about 30 ideas I've had this afternoon and hand it to you at the end of the day, David. <laughs> I guess one common um, common interest is rest, is uh, habitat restoration across the conservation partners. But perhaps you can, could you tell us a little bit about the Endangered Landscapes Programme as that's an exciting, uh, exciting initiative? Um, yes, I'm a... Uh, been involved in habitat restoration and species reintroductions and the general regeneration of biodiversity for all my career. And I'm delighted now that restoration ecology and its link to nature-based solutions and, and carbon sequestration and rewilding, all these things are now bubbling and are getting attention and getting funding. And within the CCI, we have what's called the Endangered Landscapes Programme, which is a focus on Europe, and it's probably around a million hectares of landscape restoration across Europe. And it's showing that restoration and rewilding, and the, the two are not the same, but that's not for now, um, can have a major impact on restoring biodiversity, on providing protection against flooding, bringing back um, livelihoods. And so, we're now finishing off the strategic plan for the CCI. And many of you in this meeting will have participated in that. And restoration ecology, big scale restoration ecology and nature-based solutions are key parts of that 10 year strategy. So there's a, a really exciting opportunity here to respond to the decade for ecological restoration and for us all to play, uh, really deliver some global impact. Thank you very much indeed, Mike. That was a a, a, a brief but very insightful uh, conversation view. So thank you very much for coming along and, and agreeing to, to speak. Ah, learned Sorry. so much today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just to explain to people who, who may not know, the, the CCI has a council and it has representatives from all the conservation organisations uh, and from the university. So there's uh, four of us actually representing the university on that council and then uh, individuals from the conservation organisations. We, we meet regularly to, to plan uh, the activities of CCI. So th thanks once again, Mike. Um, I'm going to now move across to Christina. I see your, you've appeared. And Yasko, hey, um, I haven't seen you for a good year, I don't think. But uh, I, uh, your, uh, Christina is uh, now a university lecturer uh, uh, at the Department of politics and international studies and uh, she's, she's uh, so very nice to see you again and uh, thank you for offering to chair this um, this next section. Thank you David. Um, I'm not sure if our speaker is already here or not. Yes, here's he here. <laughs> Hi Matthew. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, uh, for being here. Actually, uh, today, as David mentioned, it's been a while. We haven't seen each other 